Okay. Hello and welcome to Plugin Along, a stream dedicated to Lotro plugins. Last time on Plugin Along, we started the UI changes for Titan Bar currencies uh, so that we could show more than just a, a pre built list. And we ended up with a visual clone of the in game wallet window. Today, we're going to circle back around, though, and address what happens when there's a new currency that Titan Bar doesn't know about, because it's, that's the whole problem here, is, is what happens, yeah, how, how does Titan Bar stay up to date? So, we're going to try to bridge the gap between the new UI and, and missing items in the wallet. Um... So, uh, as always, feel free to jump into chat with your thoughts and questions. I know we have a few questions left over from Little Redhead's stream. So, I might go ahead and start talking about those just for the first couple of minutes here. Um, okay. Well, that's interesting. I have a feeling I've messed up a setting when I unplugged my monitors and plugged them back in. So, we're going to... We're going to deal with that here shortly. Um, okay. Uh, Patty was asking about the need to update mods. And I assume by mods, Patty meant, uh, meant plugins. And so the question is how often, essentially, I, I feel like the question is how often do updates to the game break existing plugins? Uh, and the answer is not very often. There are occasionally when the game comes out with new classes or races, uh, plugins that assumed a, a specific list of races or uh, or classes will fall out of date. Like when the Brawler came out, any plugin that had a list of what classes are available wouldn't have the Brawler, and so they would uh, not necessarily work correctly for when you were logged in with a brawler. But that wouldn't hurt your ability to log in with non-brawlers, for instance. So there's a lot of plugins up on lotrointerface.com where uh, they haven't been updated in years, possibly over a decade, but they still fundamentally work because they weren't touching parts of the game that have changed like that. So it kind of depends on the, the plugin. Uh, for instance, I have a plugin called a deed tracker, which every time they add a new deed that's not in the, the plugin, it falls more and more out of date. And so, uh, by its nature, it won't stop working necessarily as the game gets updates and updates, but it will get uh, more disconnected from reality. So every plugin can be a little bit different for that, but a lot of plugins do not fundamentally change how they work as Lord of the Rings Online updates. G from France was asking about the story. I think that was answered in chat. But yeah, in general, when you start playing Lord of the Rings online, story-wise, the hobbits have just left the Shire uh, and are making their way to Breetown. Um, and in general, as you follow the narrative, you follow the books, and then uh, at once the books run out, you start delving into new territory that uh, Turbine and then SSG, probably just SSG at that point, uh, have tried to come up with. Um, and then occasionally you'll do some time travel zipping around to view things that have happened in the past. Salacious wonders about Corsairs of Umbar. I think it's really pretty. Uh, and I've had a, a lot of fun uh, running around there for the brief amount of time that I have. Mostly I'm playing over on Treebeard, which does not have access to Haradwith yet. Let's see. Vanis was asking, as an e a new EU player, which server is the best option? Where can I find a friendly kin with, where new players are welcomed? Uh, and there were some answers in chat. Uh, I think Evernight is a larger population server with a lot of EU players. Uh, so that's a good default choice um, if you aren't sure where else to go. The server list will include uh, EU tags for servers that are uh, not necessarily exclusively, or definitely not exclusively for EU players, but encouraging people who are looking for other players who are active during EU hours, you know, five, maybe 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., uh, uh, but in the EU, which would be uh, late 
afternoon or, or late morning to mid afternoon in the US and a lot of people might be at work not available to play so it's really just about mix and matching your time zones more than anything else if you live in the EU but you wake up at 2 a.m. and you go to bed you know mid middle of the afternoon uh, you'll maybe have different uh, needs there okay and yeah, as far as looking for kinships, there are some kinships that will advertise on the forums or will look for people asking about that on the Lotro forums. I think it's just forums.lotro.com or there's just a link when you go there. Um, but you'll also be able to find people in World. Really, if you're looking for an active kinship and you uh, pop onto World and you say, hey, I'm looking for an active kinship, kind of by definition, if no one from a kinship sees your message, they may not be that active. Uh, and if you do that a couple times throughout your normal playing as maybe you would play from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, or 7 in the evening to 9 in the evening your time. Um, yeah, if you ask that at the beginning of it and at the end of it and you don't get, uh, you know, you get a response maybe from some people that you're interested in trying out, awesome. If you don't get a response, you know, try, try a different day. Some people are going to be more active some days of the week uh, than others. And a lot of people are active on the weekend when they maybe don't have time during the week. Cool. All right. Well, I'm caught up to present time. Uh, okay. So I believe my desktop uh, view is messed up. So we're going to go ahead and check this out. Yeah. So this needs to be different. Yeah. So I need to find the... <coughs> Display and change it. There we go. Fantastic. Of course, I minimized everything else. Okay. Um, Cool, so we had recently um, taken our computers outside and used a, a high powered, um, I mean, it's, it's meant to be a replacement for like a, a canister of compressed air. So it's like a reverse vacuum or maybe like a, a leaf blower, but meant for computers um, and blew out all the dust, which is great, uh, cool. But then I'm uh, almost certainly plugged in the monitor cables uh, reversed and Windows is pretty good with figuring out which physical device was your primary monitor uh, and be like, oh, okay, that's probably still your primary monitor, and the other one's your your, your whatever. Uh, but OBS did not did not like that. Okay. Salacious asks, does the Corsairs of Umbar add-in in the Lotro store include the class or is it just the content? What a great question. Unfortunately, because I already have the Corsairs of Umbar expansion, um, I don't have a good answer for that. Let me, yeah, let me pull up two things uh, where I would go for that information. Uh, so the first thing is, uh, oftentimes the wiki will have good information like that. And sometimes I'll just go check the uh, Lotro store. Oops, yeah, there we go. Uh, current expansions and see if I get a sense from, what, no, of course there's one more. Uh, see if I get a sense uh, from the entry in the store about what uh, what I seem to be buying. Um, so if the item in the Lotro shop doesn't seem to, to correspond to, say, around 40 money units worth of content, then it might be a lesser amount. Or maybe... Okay, awesome. Tellurian says, Normal, normally in-game shop expansions are just that. Umbar seems to be 3,000 Lotro points and Mariner 1,000 Lotro points. Okay. Awesome. Hmm. It looks as if they, uh, the wiki does not have that information at the moment. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing that if I go to the Lotro store, I will not be able to see Corsairs of Umbar. 
can get solvent though. That's cool. Um, yeah. Uh, content. Cool. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a thing that I think is probably a, a good thing in general for most people. Uh, is to not show you things that you already have so that you can accidentally buy them twice. Uh, one thing you can do, of course, is uh, have um, another account, like a free-to-play account that you can just log in to look at the store um, <clears throat> if you're in a situation like mine. Uh, so you can bounce from your, your real account to a free-to-play account and be like, okay, what am what I actually seeing here? Um, if you're interested in the stuff beyond the Corsairs of Umbar content, which is that first item here in all of the lists and is probably what you're buying with Lotra Points. As Tillian has mentioned, the Mariner class is also listed separately. Thanks for putting that into chat there. So if you're looking for the other things that come with any of these expansions and for the standard issue, you have bundled that content, the Mariner class, uh, an additional character slot in which to put your Mariner, uh, and the title Swashbuckler and the Swashbuckler's Frame, which if you're curious about, I assume I have that, Swashbuckler's frame looks like this, very portholy on a ship. I don't know if I like that one, but I'm right. Uh, okay, I'm interesting. Headbreaker's frame is not too different. Swashbuckler's frame is that one. I'm gonna go with the Riverfall frame, uh, frame for right now. Embrace my um, Hobbit brethren. Awesome. So the difference between what you can get for the Lotra points in the store and the standard edition looks like it would just be the title and the frame. However, if you are interested in some of the things that come with collector edition or ultimate fan bundle, then I would recommend purchasing those uh, instead of the in-store in ones. Uh, and, and of course, if you have the, the funds to do so. Cool, okay, great question, thank you. Okay, so here we are. Um, we're just in Calumbel here, which uh, is a, I feel like it's sort of the capital city of Lamadon, which is in Western Gondor. Uh, and the server of Treebeard, where we are on, recently got access to a lot of the content uh, stretching south from uh, Rohan into Western Gondor, Central Gondor. Um, Presumably some of Eastern Gondor and or Far Athelion, or I guess, is that what's over here? South Athelion. But I'm not actually sure where it cuts off. I tried going over to Minas Tirith, like war version of Minas Tirith with a character, and I hadn't been there before, but I was like, oh, I'll, I'll go over there and grab some, some footage for the open video. And then the game was like, no, this is a forbidden zone. You can't be here and kicked me out. So I'm, I'm one Mithra Queen poorer for the experience, uh, which is sad. <laughs> but so I'm not exactly sure where the current uh, content cuts off. That's another place where the wiki can be useful, though. Um, so we are on. Oh, I don't want legendary items. I want legendary servers. Um, so there's two different things to be thinking about for legendary server. Uh, Lotro has a bunch of expansions, but in what order and, and how they clump together when they're coming out into a legendary server, um, it's better to go and look and see how have they how has it come out in the past? Because Anor and Ithil have already gone through a lot of the current content. Shadowfax got even further. Uh, and I, well, but before the shadow doesn't really count in the sense of end game stuff. So we know how things are have been released in the past through Fate of Gundabad. Uh, and so, we can see right now we have Western, Central, and Eastern Gondor and the Siege of Minas Tirith. But we don't have Battle of Pelennor Fields, March of the King, and Battle of the Black Gate yet. So that'll come this winter. Neat. Okay. So, what are we looking at today? Today we are looking at Titan Bar. Titan Bar is this bar at the top of my screen here that has a way to uh, pin various pieces of information to it so you have at a glance information instead of having to go dig for it uh, and in this case we're looking at things in your wallet. Last time we updated the UI for the currencies window to match to the best of our ability what we would see in our wallet and that includes uh, the order of things in each category, alphabetical by category, 
that includes showing how much of a thing we have, although currently we're doing putting that onto the item display instead of to the side, uh, like they do in the wallet. Uh, and it also colors things green if they are um, account-wide or not green if they are personal. And you can see that in the hover over where it bounds to account on acquire or it just binds on acquire. Okay, so we have uh, the same basic things and we have the same basic search window. So if I search for to token, then I should expect to see the same view in each of these. And uh, so far, I think we do. So this is great, but the main reason we were going down this road wasn't just a UI refresh, though I think that's a welcome, welcome in this case. Uh, maybe I want to uh, track uh, Glothrock's token, you never know. But uh, the whole point was when new tokens are released, we want a way for Titan Bard just to let that happen, you know, just to show things anyway. So what I want to do is have a kind of a meta category of, you know, unknown to Titan Bar. And maybe it's the first thing that's shown because maybe that's new and important things. Maybe it's the last, I'm not sure. Uh, but unknown to Titan Bar. So if we see it in your wallet and we don't know about it, we're gonna want to put it into a special category, but still show it. And so we can still have you interact with it. Now we can simulate not knowing about something by breaking uh, the plugin as it is. So what we want to do is come on into our data files and we'll remove something uh, that we definitely have, like Mithril Coins. What happens if we stop knowing about Mithril Coins? Maybe we'll do two different things. We'll stop knowing about Mithril Coins and Anniversary Tokens. Cool. All right, how do we break Titan Bar? So um, let's pause for a minute and look at our source code so that we can make sure we have a clean working directory. We have just the to-do item change, which is what we're doing right now, which is populate extra items in the wallet window, any currency in our wallet that isn't in our built-in list, make a special category like unknown to Titan Bar and put them there. Cool. To-do file changes. So we're going to save off, uh, we're going to go ahead and commit that change. Uh, and that means we have a clean working directory, so whatever uh, things we do to break Titan Bar, uh, we'll be able to undo that really easily. Okay, so the wallet window is iterating through the wallet items by category uh, here. Uh, that's actually the German one. So we want to pull up wallet item categories? No, uh, we want to pull up wallet, no, stop re uh, resetting that. Wallet item by category and also wallet items. And we'll, we'll delete it in both places for thoroughness. Okay, so myth real coin, awesome. We're gonna go ahead and just delete that whole category. But before we do that, let's grab this number. And then in wallet items, we'll delete that as well. Awesome. Okay, and then we were gonna do anniversary token. Anniversary token, awesome. So grab that number. Oh, that'll actually be slightly inconvenient. Um, Yule Festival token, we're gonna get rid of that one. Uh, so we don't have to renumber each of these uh, entries. So that's gonna be Yule Festival. And that's the Yule Festival token there. All right, so right now, Titan Bar, right after I refresh it, does not know about Mithril Coins and it does not know about Yule Festival tokens. So when we open this up, hilarious. Uh, I forgot one thing in the bottom of wallet items, I said we are going to be looking at coin and we are not. Okay. There we go. So uh, we can see that Yule Festival token is not included. The last one we have is Violets, and we don't see uh, that uh, Mithril coin entry at all. Uh, we, we can even do a search, Mithril, nope, uh, Yule, no. So we have simulated now what it is like 
if the game updates and there's a currency that exists in the wallet, but Titan Bar doesn't know about it. So now we can we can code up a solution for that so that going forward, Titan Bar doesn't need to update uh, in order for uh, in order for you to be able to to pin one of these currencies up on the bar. Okay, so we know that we are going to have to come up with a term for this, and this is going to be a localizable term. So we have well, that item by category. And we have wallet item categories. I think wallet item categories is going to be the right place for this. Um, however, um, the, this is an auto-generated file. So we're going to want to make sure that any changes we make here. Oh, I just realized <laughs> my changes there are also going to be blown away. So we're going to stash these. Um, Missing currencies changes. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and use our auto generated here, auto generator here, to also spit out something for uh, the name of this unknown category. And what would that look like? Um, wallet item category unknown equals, and this is just going to be a string. Okay, so we want it to look something like this. And we need that to be part of the auto generation system so that um, the next time we generate this, it doesn't just blow it away and we're missing it. Okay, so the thing that is making the wallet item categories is this little bit of C sharp code here. So what we want to do is go ahead and add in file.writeline and it's going to be looking like this. In fact, we can just go ahead and stick that in there. But um, where we have a problem is this is only good for the English language. What we need is a lookup somewhere. So we're going to go ahead and just make a quick little uh, lookup here. Uh, unknown category equals new. Great. Then can I remember how to do a key value entry in C sharp in an initializer? I think the answer is no. C sharp dictionary initializer. Yeah. No, oh, nice. Okay. Um, so if that is en, and we probably need to start these in and out of braces. There we go. That looks better. So what we're going to do is actually just oh, not translate the uh, the others unless uh, Tellurian's in chat. Tellurian, if you wanted to translate unknown to Titan Bar into some proper German, uh, I will definitely make use of that. And for the rest, I'm just going to run it through uh, Google Translate. Unknown to Titan Bar, please put that in French. It's off screen. Delane says, what's the question? Excellent. Um, how would you say unknown to Titan Bar in German? And I'm curious uh, if Google Translate will uh, do any better. Yeah, actually that looks okay. Wait, I think that's saying Titan Bar is unknown. Well, 
Well, this is why Google Translate's a terrible idea. So Google Translate wants to say Titanvar unbekannt. Uh, but yeah, think, think about what's better. So this is just going to be the category uh, where currencies that Titanvar doesn't know about but are in your wallet are going to show up. So we just want to uh, highlight it as we don't know what these are, but you can, you can use them too. I guess if G is still uh, listening uh, and wants to provide a French translation or a better French translation than this, I'm happy to take it. <laughs> Agar Arthur has a suggestion. Unbekannt von Titanbar. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So we are going to, um, instead of doing straight up an English text here, what we're going to do is do a lookup unknown category. Where is it? Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and. Uh, pop that in there. Really? Oh, I didn't actually say that. Static. There we go. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, Tillerian has a better translation. Fear Titan Bar Unbekannt or in Titan Bar Unbekannt, which uh, which is better? I mean, in avoids any sort of um, uh, extended ASCII nonsense in the uh, in the files. So I guess I would default to that if they are basically the same. Okay, so. Um, I did the whole string here. I really just meant to do the thing that needed to be localized. Which will stop the syntax error from being a problem. Okay, so we now have unknown in Titan Bar and Titan Bar on the cont and in Conu the Titan Bar. Okay, good enough for our purposes. Uh, and we can always update those later pretty easily. Valerian, yes, it asks, it refers to tokens added after the re release of the used version? Absolutely. So for instance, if Mithra coins were just released now, uh, after this released version of Titan Bar, Titan Bar doesn't know about it, but we want it to show up under a category, and that's what we're using this, this unknown category uh, for. Uh, we're going to pretend Yule Festival tokens have also shown up that way. Okay. <laughs> Delirian, no worries. I know. Uh, I hear that you're in a call. Uh, that's okay. Um, I, um, thank you. Thank you for having one ear into this. We can touch base later, and if there's a better uh, version to use. Okay. So we have some changes here. Um, that's the unknown here, and these are just auto-generated updates. And then this is yeah. So the only things that are changing is we've added in, oh. I like having new lines between conceptually different things. So let's go ahead and st stick that in there as well. Okay, perfect. So, bum, 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 bum. Cool. Tillerian uh, likes the in version. I like it too. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We can see uh, that change here in Titan Bar on Bacant. Cool. Thank you. All right. Um, added localized unknown category for Titan Bar. <laughs> yeah, Tillerian, exactly. Avoiding the umlauts. Uh, sometimes it works great, and some some people have problems with it. 
Okay. So, now if we do a reload, we're going to see that those um, Mithra coins are back because we need to come back into oops, uh, our uh, source control and apply those changes that we made before. The removing of uh, Mithra coin and Yule Festival token and the reordering of these wallet use currencies down here. And then also removing Mithril and Jewel Festival from here. So now that we've gotten those changes applied, we're going to go ahead and reload. And we can see uh, they're no longer there. No Yule Festival token, no Mithril coin. Okay. So we, we need a way to track these things. My default idea, just thinking about this, is if we grab everything that's in the wallet and store it off in a table by item ID, say, the item ID equals blah, then uh, e equals that wallet item. Then each time we actually add something to the UI, we go ahead and set that entry to blank to nil. Uh, then by definition, anything that in that table uh, when we're done is an unknown. Let's uh, let's try that out. Let's uh, come into the wallet window. Mm, yeah, we're done there. And we're looking for the po uh, where we populate the tree. And so that was the populate tree view. And for this, we need to begin by Populating, no, you can buy populating a list, uh, uh, table, yeah, sure, a list of all of the current wallet items. As we add item uh, to the UI, remove them from here. Anything left goes into an unknown category. Cool. Pokemon says, hi there, hello, welcome back. We are looking at the Titan VAR code right now. Okay, so how do we iterate through the wallet? Now, it, uh, anytime we're dealing with the Lotro API, I like to kind of refresh my memory about what's going on. So we're looking at the API documentation here, and this is going to be probably under gameplay. Okay, we have wallet, uh, and we can get the size of the wallet, and then we can get an item. So we can iterate through uh, the wallet. Now, it's quite possible that the Titan Bar already has code that can do this. So if we <coughs> find uses of get size. Wallet uh, get size, and we're not looking for case sensitive stuff or word breaks. Awesome, we can see in two places we are already. Oh, one of them is Titan Bar maintenance. Don't even have to worry about that. Uh, so functions control. This is a function called load player wallet. Pokemon says this is such a cool thing that the account does educational videos and such. I'm glad you're. Uh, I'm glad you like it. I, I definitely enjoy sharing how plugins are made because it is. I feel like it's more approachable than it might seem on the face of it, and also, you know, there can be lots of interesting things to look at. Okay, so we have already an existing function that does what we are saying: load player wallet. What do we actually do? We have a player object. This is a local player object. And in here, we can say get wallet. Awesome. Gets the player's wallet. Cool. And it returns a wallet. So we have a wallet object. And this wallet object, we're going to assign to the global player wallet. Uh, and the player wallet size, we're going to save off. Now, I'm not actually a big fan of that because we know the size of the wallet is going to change. Or I should say can change. If you get a, a, 
a currency that you don't already have, the size is going to increase by one. And if you spend the last of a currency that you did have, the, the wallet size will decrease by one. So I don't actually like that we're saving off uh, player, player wallet size here. However, uh, trying to narrow our scope, we're just worried about making the currencies things better. So this is a something for the future. Uh, in fact, we can set that in the to-do. Awesome. Okay. Um, further code fixes. Why do we save off player wallet size when it is volatile? Great question. Okay. So we we get the size. That's the player wallet get size function. Awesome. In fact, I'm gonna kill that search. It's distracting. And uh, the load player wallet. If the size is zero, then we exit. I think that actually might be a mistake, although one that doesn't happen very often. Um, so if it is not zero, oh, interesting. So there's a there's a an item here which suggests that this is to address an issue which could have been fixed a decade ago. I'm uh, not actually sure. Okay, so uh, load player wallet. Um, presumably this is getting called until we actually do load the wallet. So that's that's just preventing a initialization problem. Okay, so uh, for one to n, we're going to get an item. If we're gonna get the name of that item, uh, we're going to, oh, this is some new stuff that we've done. We are going to save off the currency, interesting. So we're gonna save uh, links to those items by name. And I'm wondering if we could make use of this player currency table then, because I'm pretty sure we'll already be making use of it. Player currency, yep. And we might even be making use of it in the filter function. Yes. If it's not in the wallet right now, we just exclude it. Um, so, what I don't want to do is I don't want to mess with that. But maybe we could uh, clone that table uh, as a faster way than kind of uh, producing it ourselves. Maybe. Okay, a lot of uh, func uh, plugins have a function called deep copy. that they use to clone a table uh, kind of recursively so that you can do what we want to do here. But actually, I don't even know that we need it to be that complicated. Because we don't actually need a deep copy, we just need... Uh, copy that, a duplicate <coughs> table. I'm just doing a quick web search. Maybe this is a solved problem. over. Pokemon says, how long have you been playing Lotro? Um, I want to say that uh, be, I played in the first year of Lotro. I made an account and I hopped on and I 
found it like a fun experience, but at that time in my life, I just didn't really have the time for any MMO. So I'd stopped playing uh, World of Warcraft, I stopped playing Lord of the Rings Online, uh, and just had, had to do other things. Um, so I didn't get back into it until early 2019, I think. So I think about five years, give or take, um, on and off. All right, so um, we're at the <laughs> LuaUsers.org wiki, uh, and they're talking about different things depending on what you need. I just need like the very basic stuff. I definitely don't want a deep copy. I just want a new table that has all the same keys and all the same values that I can change without changing the original. And this one is fascinating. And I'm wondering if I can just do that line of code right there. So if we go ahead and local remaining currencies equals unpack, and that is player wallet. All right, we don't like table unpack as deprecated. Well, that's fair. I mean, unpack certainly seems to be there. Well, let's see what happens. In fact, let's throw a, a turbine dot dump. Oh, sorry, turbine dot shell dot right line of the dump of remaining currencies. And just see what happens. All right, attempt to call unpack on no value. I could have sworn we used unpack. Oh, it's just unpack. Haha. -ha. That would do it. Okay, just so we can compare, uh, make sure that we're comparing you know, apples and apples. Okay, we can see player wallet. Oh, I don't actually mean player wallet, do I? I meant player currency. That will make things better. Okay, well that's very promising. Uh, we can see a bunch of things. This is my completionist character, so uh, I have a lot of currencies mm -hmm. that I've acquired over time. Um, and we can see we have player currency, starts with a Rift Iron Coin, but as we've talked about before, when you iterate through a uh, Lua t table, you get non-deterministic uh, orderings through it. So uh, just because this one starts with Rift Iron Coin doesn't mean that uh, dumping out a clone of that table would necessarily, though it might. So that's Rift Iron Coin. Let's see if we can find. Oh, well, remaining currencies, empty. Okay. Now the other thing uh, is that We didn't try doing this through a function, so function clone uh, currencies, no, uh, player currency, and that's just going to be return that, and we'll see about that. Yeah, 
I think that's what they were trying to show us in this uh, in this sample here. Oh, in fact, I think we don't even need to dump out player currencies. We have a sense that there's hundreds of entries there. Okay, so we'll need something slightly uh, more refined to clone that. Okay, does this give us any ideas? The shallow copies, deep copies, yeah, okay. So we're going to go ahead and iterate through player uh, currency, and we're just going to say clone key equals value. That's all we need. Probably. Let's give that a shot. All right. So now we are seeing a bunch of what we want to see. Now we can see it actually does start with a rift iron coin. That's good. Pokemon says, Lotro is so fun. I'm loving it. I agree. I have a lot of fun in this world. Apparently our uh, neighbors also agree they just set off a firework in celebration of Lotro, I assume. Okay. Why are they doing that? Oh, of course. The Dutch football team is playing in a World Cup style multi-country competition. <coughs> Dutch football score. Oh. Alright, apparently we are crushing Romania. Good job, everyone. And we're at 90 minutes plus 3? Yeah, it does not seem good for the Romanian team, sorry. Uh, but yay Dutch. Okay, uh, so we have a clone player currency. We could generalize this into a cloning function, but the problem is uh, as was mentioned on that reference page, what you want out of a clone function might change. Maybe you want a deep copy, maybe you want a shallow copy. And so I'm just gonna do a one-off here because it gives me exactly what I need, which is the precise le level of cloning that I'm looking for. And I don't have a good intuitive sense of what other people mean when they say shallow copy or deep copy with respect to Lua stuff. I suspect shallow copy is what we would want um, but a more robust shallow copy function would, would not be able to assume that you just have um, key, uh, string equals table entries all the way down. You might have recursive tables. Though I guess for a shallow copy that wouldn't matter. Anyway, um, but we have just a simple function that could be uh, generalized later. Okay, so this is indexed by the name of the thing. Uh, so if we search for name, Uh, then we're definitely making the thing now. So remaining currencies of item info get name equals nil. <coughs> it really helps if I spell item info correctly though. All right, how many times have we called get name so far? Too many. So what we want to do is grab that item name, local item name equals item info get name. And we're going to go ahead and substitute that in anytime we had the item in forget name. And this isn't an efficiency issue, it's just um, if we want to do something with that name later on, maybe uh, affect it in some way, we'll have a single place to do it. <laughs> Pokemon says, I played nine hours straight the first time I played two days ago. Yeah, that, that can happen, especially with a new game. Uh, and there's if you enjoy the world of Lord of the Rings, as I do and as Little Redhead did um, um, 
uh, d does as well. She was streaming just before me. Uh, then being able to jump into the world of Middle Earth and run around in the Shire and run around Bree Town is uh, an especial pleasure, right? You're, you're taking the the world of books or movies that you really enjoy, and you get to like jump into it and be like, ah, it's the hill, it's the party tree. Uh, of course, I'll carry your male little hobbit, right? Like it's a lot of fun, uh, and so uh, yeah, it's, it's great to be able to jump into those intellectual properties that we really enjoy and be like, aha, it's my world now. <laughs> okay, we have uh, saved off that item name right here, and then we're just going to set that remaining currencies item name equals nil. And when we're done with that, um, this is iterating through each of the categories. We're going to go ahead and say turbine dot. Uh, shell dot right line and say remaining ca uh, currencies uh, and then we'll dump out remaining currencies because ideally what we're gonna see is just those two that we have removed from our files so we're gonna go ahead and reload this uh, and we can see Titan bars loaded open this up and we can see remaining currencies Yule festival token and mithril coin perfect we didn't have to, if we didn't do a dump if we did a more uh, casual uh, iteration through it uh, this would be a little less messy that's okay so what, what we've done is we now have before we get started we we copy off what's in our wallet and then as we add things to the UI we remove things from our uh, known wallet and now we only have remaining things that are new to Titan bar so what we want to do is if there are any if Oh, goodness, how do we count how many non-nil entries there are in a table? Uh, Lua table length, I think. There may not be a built-in function for it, Lua. Yeah. Length of table. Um, there's a get end function, but that won't work for our purposes because we don't have numeric indexes that start from one and end at a uh, at the maximum number. I think. But you know what? Why not? Get n and get n of uh, remaining currencies. Really? What do you think is wrong with that? Oh, right, it's equivalent to the number. They want me to use the number. All right. Let's see if that works for our situation. Number two, zero. Yeah, it does not. Uh, as expected, because we don't have numerical indices starting at one and ending at n, that won't work. Um, do we have anything that's like count? We have a lot of accounts. Get count. Well, we certainly have things that uh, provide that. We want uh, get size might be a more idiomatic thing to say. Get size. We don't seem to have that function ourselves. That's okay. Function. Table uh, get size. Now, is this a good idea? Oh, Mio says hello. Hello. Is it a good idea to insert that into table? I don't know, but it seems like such a useful thing to have. Should this go in table? Not sure. We'll deal with that later. Right now, we just want it to work. So for uh, KV, well. I don't actually care what's in there. In pairs of <clears throat> uh, 
do and so uh, lo local size equals zero size equals size plus one return size okay uh, table dot get size and we want a table dot get size of uh, remaining currencies. Let's try that out. All right, we can see get size return two. Upside, this is the correct number. Downside, you basically have to go through each entry in the table in order to calculate how many entries there are in the table. There are other ways we could do this. For instance, we could save off uh, that table count to the beginning and just um, manipulate that as we go. Is that worth it? Maybe. Let's take a look and see what that would be like. Um, local remaining currencies count equals and for that, it is um, player currency, I guess it would be count, although, where is that? size. Let's dig into that for a moment. Okay, so we save it off and we never adjust it. Right. Uh, currency added. I guess we would say player wallet equals player wallet size plus one, and currency removed, we would say player wallet size equals player wallet size minus one, uh, if we wanted to believe in it being correct. So at that point, yep, we just have those entries. Here we, we get size when it first starts, and then we iterate through that number. Yes, okay, I know what that is. Um, don't need to worry about that. Okay, at that point, I think we can assume that player wallet size is correct. And if that's correct, we can go ahead and save it off. And as we are affecting remaining currencies, we can go ahead and save equals remaining currency count minus one. And then we don't need to get size Instead, we just use that thing that we have saved. Let's give that a look. All right. Remaining currencies, minus 312. So we made a false assumption somewhere, possibly that this was a global value. Let's take a look at this. Um, Yeah, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be, but turbine, <laughs> dot shell, dot right line. And what is this thing? I'm guessing at zero. No, remaining currencies count 165. Well, that's interesting. Oh, oh. Right. We, this is a list of what's in our wallet, but we do actually iterate through everything and it's only, okay, yes. Uh, it's only 
we were only doing it if we added it, but we actually add everything and then we use the filter function to remove them so that people can add, uh, hit a radio button and say, no, show me everything. But that means in this right here, we really just wanna say if player currency of item name, then end. Let's give that a shot. Okay, well, we're down to zero. Okay, I think what that tells us is I'm not gonna get this right um, fast enough to trust it. So we might come back, uh, circle back around uh, later. But in the meantime, we know that our um, how many of them are there function worked. So table.getSize. So if table.get, oh, actually, let's save it off because we're, we're gonna want that. Local remaining currency size equals table.get size of remaining currencies. And if remaining currency size is greater than zero, then we wanna do something about it. And it's gonna be uh, very similar, actually. We're gonna be adding a currency. Uh, so we wanna go ahead and have a little bit of a copy paste here. Do I wanna spin that off into a function? Probably. Function make root node. Uh, and what do we need to make a root node? We need uh, the row width, we need the row height. Uh, width, height. Okay, we need. Um, the root nodes, root nodes. Um, we need to know if it's a category. Is oh wait no. No, we do know it's a category because it's root node. This is just a different problem. Thank you. Um, okay, we. We need the text. And we'll go ahead and do that at the other end, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then we have width and we have height. Color is fine, text alignment and setting that good. Okay, that's excellent. So what we can do here is we can call make node. So that local category equals make root node and for that, then, we need to have the root nodes. We need the row width, row height, and the text. And that's gonna be this. Now, for IntelliSense, we would like to go ahead and document this function. So we're gonna go ahead and do that using uh, this function block We're going to head a return statement first so that we can auto detect what that is. There we go. Return tree node. The created node. Okay, so root nodes is actually something. Um, that's a get node. So that's going to be a tree node list node list. With we know is going to be an integer. Do we know it's an integer? Or with, yeah, these all look like integers. That returns a number. Okay, number is better. It could be fractional. Yep, 
that takes a string. Okay, so all of our types are typed out here. If we wanted to give information about them, uh, we could say the result of calling, and this is going to be uh, tree to get nodes. Um, the width for this node, the height for this node, the text to put into this node's label. Alright, so what does that mean? That gives us a um, an IntelliSense uh, which is a little bit more useful. Uh, we know the types of these things, we can see it up there, tree node list, number, number, string, the type of the return value, and that means uh, down here we know that this make root node should be giving us a tree node so we can hover over category node and see that it is a tree node. So this is just about uh, enabling IntelliSense to do a better job of uh, telling us. So now IntelliSense knows that there's a set size uh, uh, function on this category node, although we do not need to do that. Okay, so let's double check that we didn't break anything. Come on in. Great, we still have these things. So that means now we can use that same function, make root node, down here. Uh, and in this case, we're going to go ahead and use that uh, value that we stored in well, item categories probably, and we're just going to reference that. Well, item categories unknown. Awesome. And then we need to iterate through uh, just like we were doing before. We can't use i pairs. I'm trying to decide if we actually care about organizing these alphabetically. Maybe. Let's pretend like we do want to do that. What would it take? Not too much. We're going to assume that there's not going to be a lot of these things. Um, so if this is greater than zero, um, get uh, an L, uh, get a table sorted alphabetically. So this will be for uh, key value in remaining currencies do and uh, and then here um, local remaining currencies in order equals a table and we're going to say remaining currencies uh, table dot add um, remaining currencies sorry insert uh, remaining currencies and Uh, that's going to be key. Okay, what does that look like? Uh, well, turbine.shell.writeline. Uh, this should be a numerically indexed one equals whatever, two equals whatever table. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and dump that out. And take a look at that. Oh, no, we're not. Attempting to call a table value wallet window four ninety nine. I did not do pairs like I should have. That will definitely break the system. Though I really wish Lua could just be like, well, if it's a table, we'll just call pairs by default. It's okay. Can't insert it into the wrong table. That will actually give bad, bad results. Okay, so we have our remaining currencies one Yule, two equals Mithril. What a great demonstration that we need to uh, do a table sorting. Table sort. So if we go ahead and call table.sort of remaining currencies in order. That'll do an in-place sorting. And by default, probably just an alphabetical 
uh, which is what we want. Let's take a look at that. All right, we have Mithril Coin and Yule Festival. Now that's not necessarily uh, a good demonstration because iterating through tables can be uh, uh, non-deterministic, but as we can see, we get Yule Festival token when we remove it, table.sort. Uh, this would be more obvious if there were more entries, but I think we'll take that as a, we probably did it correctly. And so what we can do is we can iterate, instead of iterating through remaining currencies, we can iterate through remaining currencies in order using I pairs, which will force a consistent ordering, and then use that to index into remaining currencies uh, to get our nice alphabetical ordering. So that's what we want to do here, uh, is in this place where we were indexing through those wallet items, We're going to go ahead and remove currencies in I pairs of that. Yes. Do stuff. And here's where another function might be nice because we have a function for creating not just a root node, but we could have a function make currency node. And with this, It's really this item node. Control with, yep, all that is great. So if we were to make a function called make currency node that did all of this, what would we see? We would also need a width and a height. And for each of those row width row heights, we're just going to change that. Okay, row height. Great. Uh, what else do we have? Category node nodes. Nodes. Um, we need the item ID. Okay. We need the row indent. We can place that with width and height uh, indent. And any place we're referencing that, we're just going to say indent. You know, now I now I regret the genericizing of width and height. Now that I see, um, now that I see, we have multiple widths and heights here going on. Info control with item info. The item ID we were getting already, but since we have an item info, uh, we can just actually say item info get what. Does the ID come from the info or from the item itself? Ooh, let's find out. Uh, so wallet, wallet item. Um, description image, okay. Uh, and then Gets that, yes. Oh, 
Oh, of course, we are getting an item info in a different way. And that item info has a, it doesn't have an ID. You need the ID to get the info. Okay. Item ID and item info. Add them to the wrong function. Okay. What else do we have? Um, value. What was value? Value is wallet items. is different from an item so that's fine and then this was play yeah player wallet of the item info has the name let's find out item info get name yep item info get name Do we think that that is sufficient? I mean, we've certainly resolved the... We've certainly resolved some of those issues. So, with all of that, we can return the item node. And with that, we can go ahead and get, make a stab at documenting this uh, wildness the created node all right nodes we know that this was going to be a tree node list the nodes result of calling category get nodes All right, we've got a bunch of numbers. Um, item ID, pretty sure. We're gonna say that was an integer, yeah. Number is also fine, but we know that it's definitely should be an integer. And then item info is a thing. is a question can we get the ID do we think that is possible with an item info well with an item 
But we get item info, a name, it's local player. Okay, no. Um, item info, background image, category description, durability, icon image, max quantity. Okay, I think this is actually an outstanding problem that we can't get the item ID, and that's okay. Okay, so any place that we're looking to use that item ID uh, is going to run into problems. So, where is that? The filter function. Okay. Um, if we didn't have an ID, it's... It was added to Lutro since the last Titan Bar release. We, sh we should always show these. So, if tree node dot item ID equals nil, then return false and do not filter it. Okay, um, where else are we using it? Get item from ID, okay. Oh, yeah, if we don't have the ID, then we are not going to be able to, but that's, that's okay. We're not gonna be able to have that item, oh, will we even have an item info? What do we have from the wallet? This is the only thing we'll have, we'll have the name We'll have the quantity, and we'll have oh well, well the image instead. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so we need to know if the item ID integer um, and item info question mark. These are nullable. They might not be there. Okay. Item info control. So if item ID, uh, really item info, then what are we using item ID for? Hmm. this thing here. Okay, I may have been over eager in trying to um, refactor this into a function because there's a lot of potential problems here. Um, we're going to go ahead and, oh, hey. you did say it was a missing end, didn't you? We're going to go ahead and pull that out and put it somewhere else for a minute. Because we need to do something substantially different if we don't have an item ID and we won't have an item ID. We'll just have a name and a, and a currency count. Um, so we just have to, we'll, ha we'll copy this. and start modifying it here and eventually maybe we'll feel like that's um, something we can generalize. Okay, so we do not have an item ID. Instead we have an, we do have an index and then we have an item name. So we don't have an item ID. But we don't need to look up the item. And we're definitely going to be doing this. So we don't need to check to see if we can find that. Okay, um, wallet item. Fa 
fascinating. Well, we can't look it up because by definition we don't have information. So that's gone. Lord Zach says hello, hello! We are working on Titan bar changes so that if Lotro knows about a currency and Titan bar doesn't, it can still show up in the window in some fashion. Okay, so we don't have an item info. We do have an item name though. In fact, we don't even need to set that. Okay, so we have an item node. We're going to add it to the category node nodes. Set the size. We're not going to set the item ID. Quantity. Um, we can actually just say the quantity is equal to. Um, oh, this isn't. Oh, yes. Sorry, local um, wallet item equals remaining currencies of item name. We do need that. Okay, so. Um, Wallet item has a currency function. Uh, oh, sorry, um, quantity. So if it's in the wallet, we definitely can call that. Item control with, that's all fine. All great. Uh, item control, we don't want that. Instead, we want a local item image equals turbine.ui.control. Set the parent, that's fine. <clears throat> okay, and we want to set um, the background, and we can get this from the wallet item as well. Wallet item get, at least I think we can. Well, item get image. Great, get image. All right, we can set the oh, set the quantity is actually something we can't do here. But at some point, if we split out the quantity from um, from the image and put it separate the way it is in the actual wallet, then we'll be able to do something with that. To do. When current when quantity is split out from um, item info control, um, put this there. Okay, and then we have the label, and we're setting the oh. That's funny. Well, item this is here is account item. All right, if is account item, can't do that. Um, wallet item is account item. Then set that to green. Alignment. Okay, the rest of that is okay. Can't do that either. We're iterating through it. Oh, we could. It won't matter. Okay, so maybe that is enough to see what we're trying to see. So let's go ahead and launch this. Unknown to Titan Bar. Oh, we don't. We didn't expand it. Fascinating. Okay, two problems there. Um, there's a transparency issue, and there is a size issue. Okay, so first of all, set size. Um, we can come back up here, item info control, local uh, item image with equals 32. Uh, and for that, we can avoid these magic numbers. And the other thing is these things have uh, transparency in them. So we want to merge that transparency with the background. Item image set, I don't know, 
Um, back color blend mode. That sounds great. Do I remember what that is? I do not. However, blend mode. Probably an alpha blend. So we're doing uh, turbine.ui.blendmode.alpha blend. Sounds great. Let's take a look at that. Oh, also, we need an expanded. Category node set expanded to true after we're done with those. I can fix both of those in one go. So let's reload this. Scroll down to the bottom. Unknown to Mithra. I still have not fixed the uh, transparency issue. Uh, but we do have the right size there. I will say the text could start a little bit farther over. Uh, label, set position, left. We're going to say plus four. Uh, all right, set back, oh, back color blend mode. That was my mistake. Set back, set blend mode. All right, so the um, transparency issue has been solved. Now it's blending with this instead of cutting a hole into our window. Uh, the labels are starting a little bit farther over and we have everything we can have at this point. Um, we could show the quantity again if this window were wider and we haven't gotten there yet, but if we're showing the quantity separate from the icon, we could uh, throw that in uh, and also the, the maximum as well. Okay, so we have future-proof Titan bar in a way. Assuming that we can make this work, uh, we now have a way to say, well, Titan Bar doesn't know what it is, but you're welcome to add it to the bar anyway. Neat. Let's look at our source control and see what changes we've made and make sure uh, we haven't made any that we didn't mean to. All right, so first of all, we can see wallet items is just the removing of those things for testing purposes. Functions, we can say uh, fix, no, update player wallet size when items are added or removed. So that's actually more like a bug fix. Uh, as it turns out, it doesn't really matter because whenever that function that we used it was called, it reset the value of it. Probably should never have been a global variable. save off that note for later. All right, so the only changes we've made have been in wallet window. And in here, what do we, whoops, what do we have? I'm gonna pull this up for side-by-side -side differences. Okay, so first of all, if we don't have an item ID, then we always show it. Um, and so what we're gonna see is if we search for token, those things are always shown. Is that important though? Hang on. I don't think we actually need to do that. Where's our filter function? There it is. Oh, damn, filter function. Is that true? Is wallet items. Yeah, okay, so value, we're checking old, but we don't actually need it there. So if tree node dot item ID, then do the rest of this. Okay. Um, 
Checking if it's in the wallet is fine. Filter text is fine. Let's kill that. Let's come back and uh, see how that works. Okay, so we can see these two items are still there. So if I search for coin, filtering is fine. If I don't search for that, if I search for token, yield token is there. And if I search for something that is in neither of them, like Brie, just my Breland woodmarks show up. Bottle mark. Okay, why do I have multiple mark of triumphs? Yeah, I don't actually know why. Uh, mark of, wait, triumph? Mark of triumph, what's up, what's up with that? Mark of triumph, well it's there twice, that's what's up with that. Huh. Okay, but why does it show up twice in here? in the code. Mm -hmm. Wallet window. Um, okay, so we're populating this. We're going in the wallet used categories. Yes, and then Okay, so it made its way twice into here, but how do we know which one is real? It sounds like a child's being tortured outside. <laughs> Either that or a small animal. Since our neighbors have small children, this is not abnormal. <laughs> Lord Zach, I wish it did sound like meow. It sounds more like a bird being, you know, made unhappy. Yeah, it's a child, but it sounds like a bird. Well, neither of them are marked as old, and I think that's interesting. Um, but I don't think it's interesting enough to worry about it here. To do. Okay. Um, there are, there is at least one item duplicate. What's up with that? Um... Yeah, I don't. I, it's entirely possible there's other duplicates actually. Now that I look at it, um, so if we were to uh, copy all this into a Sublime Text um, area, and really we just want to know what's after these. This. So we're going to go ahead and. go ahead and sort that and we're gonna go ahead and do a unique and there's 570 lines and now uh, there's 564 okay so there's six duplicates in there fascinating Looks like six duplicates. Now, since these are sorted alphabetically in the wallet items by category, it might be easier to find them. We can see two marks of triumph. Fascinating. 
uh, two marks of victory, but those are different. That might actually be enough because this mark of vic victory is blue in here, but could they both be in there? Zeus asks, by chance, is there a way to show in the wallet items, uh, is there a, sh a way to show what's in carryalls? So that is complicated because right now, Lua plugins do not have access to what is inside of a carryall. That's a bit of functionality uh, that hasn't been added to the Lua API to say, given that this is a carryall, give me a list of things that are inside of it. So plugins can see when something goes into a carryall, and if something is automatically removed from a carryall during the execution of a recipe or turning in a task quest, um, there's also chat output that says, oh, we pulled this out of carryalls. So a plugin could theoretically keep an eye on what goes in and what comes out and keep sort of a balance across all of your carryalls and say this is what is in a carryall somewhere. Um, but we can't easily track which carryall is which. So if you pull a carryall out of your shared storage and put some stuff into it and put it into shared storage and then later pull that out onto another character, it's it's still in a carryall as far as that plugin would be concerned, right? Um, and if you manually remove something from a plugin, sorry, from a carryall, the plugin can't know about that. So if I come into uh, here and I pull out this uh, crafting carryall, and I pull out a stack of things, uh, right now plugins have to use chat output to know when things go into or out of a carryall. And when you manually put something in or out of a carryall, there's no chat message. And so what a plugin thinks is in your carryalls could become out of sync if you ever uh, manually remove something or put something in. Uh, if I hit the gather button, uh, even the gather button did not uh, spit out a chat message. So um, what the only thing that would work is those times when it automatically comes in. Like right here, uh, looks like that went into a different chat window. I'll go ahead and just bring that down here. Gathered 83 Eorlingus hides into the large crafting carryall. Right, so we get a chat message there um, and another one, 15 Anorian hides. So a plugin can know about those. Yeah, so the gather button or moving things out or in manually could result in a plugin having a disconnected idea of what is in your carryalls. But if all you ever did was have things automatically gathered in or spent from them, or whenever you removed something from the carryall, it was just to put it into a different carryall, so the balances of what's in your carryalls remains the same, then yes, you could have a plugin under those circumstances tell you what is in your carryalls as a single container. So because of those current limitations, I don't think any plugin authors have taken the plunge to provide this not 100% correct, but reasonably close uh, view of things um, under those uh, circumstances. Um, so Zeus says, I was wondering because of the added ability to change the names. Yeah, as of right now, plugins cannot see the name that you uh, modify. So if I modify this to be um, let's see, this is a large crafting carryall. It is, um, that is Taylor carryall. That's fascinating. I got an error message, wallet window 308, table index is no. I'm gonna go track that down for just a second before I forget about it. Where? Oh, W cur, I hate W cur. Okay, that's a problem for another day. Okay. Um, so yes, that's that's some of the limitations that result in why I think are, are why most Lotro plugin authors haven't taken the plunge to provide this partial view of carryalls. Because for a lot of people, I don't think that's a reasonable expectation that you'll never pull things out manually and, and use some of them and only put some of them back or you know trade to other people. And making a whole UI around 
adjusting these things is totally possible. Like, oh, you think I have 500 of these, I only have 300. Yeah, that's very doable, but it's, it's work that I think no one has taken on right now. Flarion thinks the name of the carryall is used during one of these auto collects. I'm curious about that, so. Yes, okay. Um, so we can see uh, we gathered uh, that into the Taylor carryall. That's cool. So, yes, um, there could be a single bucket for each of your sized carryalls that you haven't renamed, and then a bucket for uh, the other ones. Uh, one, one bucket for each of those. And so you, you could uh, you could see that. Um, thank you, Delirian. I hadn't realized that that went into chat that way. So yes, if all of your carryalls were named differently, we, uh, a plugin could have a granular view of where your different uh, goods are, provided that you either never manually move things around, or if you do, there's some sort of UI where you could update that. I wonder if uh, Lotro Companion knows what's in carryalls, because then you could have an import feature. <laughs> Zeus, so at the time, it's it's not a no. It's it's no one has done it. Um, so I think within the constraints, if you were content to use the plugin with all of these caveats, you know, someone could write a plugin to track things part way and then you would just have to avoid using your carryalls in a way that the plugin didn't like. Um, so it's, I think it is possible with a couple of huge asterisks but I think no one has implemented it yet. So if you feel like a challenge and have any uh, desire or any background in programming um, you know you could be a person who tries tries to make that happen uh, but short of that no I, I don't think anyone's been talked into it yet. Okay, let's copy this off. <laughs> Tillerian thinks it would be too frustrating since anyone who uses it wrong would blame you. It maybe. Uh, you know, I don't mind people blaming me, but uh, um, what's up with this error message? Okay, awesome. Okay, so we had a to-do item, populate extra items in the wallet window, done. We can include that in here. Populate uh, added unknown to Titan bar currencies to the wallet window. Cool, so we have that. We don't need that, we don't need that, and then, okay, so what do we have here? I know we don't actually need to attach that to this commit. So moving this name into this section right below here, where instead of pulling it out here, we pull it out here after we confirm that it exists. Um, what's going on with that end though? Oh no, there it is, okay. It goes there, thank you. Okay, yeah, I think that's a, a fine change by itself. So stage that and stage that, cool. Don't check value.old until we know value exists. Okay. So then it says, by the way, I have an update, to, uh, an idea to update the data of the carryalls, but it will require you to use Lotro Companion. Yeah, I was just thinking that is if Lotro Companion does know what's in your carryalls, and if it knows what name you've named these carryalls, then you could definitely have a synchronization function between Lotro Companion and Lotro. Um, 
that pulls that into a plugin data file, uh, and then the plugin knows. So that would be a way to overcome some of this desynchronization is just run this thing every once in a while. Okay, what else, what other changes did we make? We have the clone player currency. Hmm. Delirian thinks in Logic Companion you can see the content of the carryalls if they're on a character during data collection and thus correct the numbers, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I, I keep most of my carryalls in shared storage and I don't think I would enjoy a process of removing them from shared storage for the scan and then putting them back after the scan. So that's part of my, the problem is I have a personal method of keeping track of what's in my carryalls that doesn't revolve around a um, plugin. And so uh, Zeus, in case this is useful for you, um, what I do, in fact, I'm gonna put this back. What I do for my carryalls is I use the naming feature of the shared storage to generally organize things. So for instance, I have a bucket called task, which is where I throw my task items, and it's also where I throw my task carryalls. Uh, and so if I'm doing something with task items, I don't know in which carryall they are, but I do know the very first carryall has the high level stuff. So if I pull this out, this is sort of the, 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 the more likely to be current stuff. So if I want a bunch of stuff, Cool, this is West Rohan and Gondor. Awesome, I've got 3,926 of them. Go team. After that, Torn Skin, West Rohan, Gondor, and Aldenorian. Awesome. I'm just sorting my count here, so they're gonna be a little uh, out of order as far as level goes. Shattered Hatchet, West Rohan, and Gondor. Pitted Sword Sheath, West Rohan, Gondor, and, and Aldenorian. Awesome. Uh, so that's that's the first thing is I know that's the, the leftmost one in task is the most recent stuff. And other than that, they're not really organized very well. So that's okay. Um, so metal crit, I know that this one has my high level metals. This one has my low level metals and this one has all of my crit stuff. So if I'm looking for a, uh, a crit object, I should say all. I know most of my crit stuff, the Taylor stuff is in uh, woodworking. They, they tend to be in their other uh, bags, but uh, in general, if it's a crit item, it goes in here. Cool. Um, Affidel, who is my metal slash tailor. Well, all the metals are in a, in a more general sense because they're used for all sorts of things, but the tailor stuff, anything that's tailor related goes in this carryall. So that's all your hides, your leathers, your threads, your whatever. Uh, and then when I'm done, I you know put them back where they go so Schildvach. Schildvach is my jeweler slash cook. And so one of these, and I do forget which one it is, the, the beginning or the end, but I think it's the beginning, has all my gems in it. And then the other three are my cooking stuff. So one of them is intermediary stuff that I've built, the ingredients. One of them is stuff I've bought from a vendor. And one of them are crops that I have harvested. Oops. So if I pull them out in that order, then I know the first one is gems, awesome, jeweler. This one is all of those intermediate ingredients that I've made. This one are all of those things I bought from a vendor. And this one is all of those crops that I've harvested. It's a little bit full. I should uh, probably think about doing something about that. So if you have a mind for such, uh, you know, that delights in such uh, uh, behavior, then this is a way that you can avoid the, the need to even name your carryalls. Like, uh, it's cool that they have developed a way to name carryalls. I don't use it really because, you know, it doesn't show up in the shared storage uh, currently anyway, and eh, whatever. So yeah, my forester slash woodworker, uh, which I should really just rename uh, slash W. Um, this one is going to have forestry stuff in it. Uh, usually just wood because all the leathers are with my tailor, which is just something that I happen to know. And if it's if it's a less used thing or a less specific thing, then it just goes into my other box and I deal with that later. 
Tilarian says, I asked Lotra Commanding if it is possible to read the content of carryalls that are in shared storage, and he said it is not, only when we have them in character. And that actually makes a lot of sense. It's probably the exact same underlying technical reason why you can't see the name of the carryall until it's been pulled into your character. Um, the act of withdrawing it from the shared storage is going to probably pull down information about everything that's in it, uh, because otherwise that's a cost you would have to pull down during login. Uh, or sometime, maybe when you're opening your shared storage, and there's already a little bit of a delay when you're opening your shared storage or your personal vault. So um, I think I think making you pay that at the time where you pull it into your inventory probably makes the most sense. How many carry alls, task carry alls do I have? I currently have four task carry alls that I'm actively using. Uh, task. Uh, and another two larges that are waiting in standby because as as we're going through landscape content on Treebeard, uh, I just I save all the old task items, so um, so I just keep on adding more task item carryalls to the mix. Uh, and me the medium and the small, maybe at least one of the larges, just came from different expansions. You know, when they're like a, a, a carryall selection box or something like that. So I wouldn't have intentionally purchased a medium task item carryall, but I can't bring myself to th just like toss it away. <laughs> Like the idea of destroying a task item carryall, even though it is a small one and thus not worth my time, is just anathema to me. So it's, it takes up a space in my inventory for now. I don't, I don't have a solution for that. It just it just is. Um, yeah, OK. And then in general, what do we have? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, plus another. Um, Almost so there's like 29 carryalls here. So the idea of pulling those out all out into my inventory for a character scan and then putting them back is just bonkers. Oh, Tolerian says you did some maths and programming around the carryalls, and you realize there's currently 245 different items for the tests. Neat. Um, so it looks like five could be sufficient. Um, I did have a problem until recently where I had more than 5,000 of some task items and so they were spilling over and taking up slots in additional carryalls. But recently I had a, um, a an in-game goal to get my four main characters on Treebeard all up to having 15 um, daily task capacity. And so for that, they each of those you can do it in different ways, but the way I'm doing it is each of those characters is completing their own five task deeds, which would give them plus one, and then um, pulling another plus one button over from five different other characters as well. So those characters all need to do a hundred turn-ins. And so between them, it's a thousand turn-ins or five thousand um, task items. So uh, I no longer have more than five thousand of any given task item, um, but Someday that'll come back. <laughs> I've also noticed that there's a not insubstantial amount of a legendary item reward, uh, le legendary item experience that you can get from these uh, if you're doing them reasonably on level. So most of the 90, 98 boxes that I've filled in on this bar have come from doing task item turn-ins um, this, this time around on reward track 10. So I'm almost at that line. So yes, Tellurian, uh, that is good to know that I, I will be able to cap out at five or so. But yeah, I I would have bought these if they were extensively on sale, or they would have come with expansions, the, the extra task item carryalls. Um, but I also expect you know there will be more task items eventually. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the, the side uh, track. So anyway, Zeus, if you are still in chat and you are curious about this kind of a, a strategy for differentiating amongst your carryalls, uh, I could, feel free to ask questions. I can go into it. I, well, it was pretty thorough, but if, if there's any specific questions you have, uh, go for it. But that's, that's how I deal with knowing where different uh, carryalls are, are for different purposes is I separate them out by type. These are my jewelry ones. These are my cooking ones. If you do not have the disposable income or the disposable Lotra points to buy more, uh, to buy enough carryalls where each one can have a specific purpose. Like if you just have two or three carryalls and you just throw everything into them and that's all you've got, 
uh, then this may not work for you. But if you have few enough carryalls where you're mi mixing their purposes because you don't have enough to specialize, then it might... I, I don't know how much trouble it would be to just have them sit in your inventory and then at the end of the play session toss the three or four of them into shared storage so the next character can use them, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't know if that's causing you difficulty in your playing style, but uh, yeah. Okay, those are thoughts that I have. Awesome. Well, I'm noticing the clock is just ticked over two hours here. So, um, we've made a good progress here. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and wind this stream down. Uh, we've gotten our unknown uh, category at the bottom. So we know that we're future-proofing ourselves. So as long as we take this into account for adding things to the bar and removing them from the bar and all that, uh, we'll have set ourselves up to not only be able to track anything in your wallet, but also things in your wallet that we don't even know about. So that's, that's the, the goal, fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, and that's a great time to get last minute questions, comments, concerns into chat. Um, and then we'll be looking at them and committing some of the, of the code changes here. Um, hmm. Tillerian says, I try to do a list of the task items and how to distribute them so I have my carryalls dedicated to a specific level range. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I, I, I've been doing mine a little bit more organically, just um, the task item carryall fills up uh, as, as we go through landscape play, so then I just grab the uh, next one and th that's my new uh, uh, high-end bag. Um, but I'd be curious when that's all said and done, if they're all filled up with something, uh, how that compares to kind of the, the optimal distribution that you've developed. Okay, so we have a new clone player currency function. Pretty sure we're still using that. Let's go ahead and come in into the window. We can see, yes. Okay, we have the get size function we're adding to table dot. We're using that, awesome. Do we want to document those? it would be a good idea. Okay, so that is 347, 74. Hmm, so says there is no optimal list. So, so, since quests sometimes do not correspond to item level. Hmm. Does the same item ever appear on different quest uh, little quest boards, though? Mm -hmm. Or if it's in the 51 to 60 range, is it only in the 51 to 60? Not even looking at the item level, just the list of quests on the, on the board. Because I know, of course, something can be used multiple times within a, in one, but I'm having trouble remembering if one can be used across boards. Okay, comment. Um, duplicates the player currency table, but does not deep copy the uh, wallet item entries within. Return table a duplicate of player currency, a shallow copy of player currency. Okay, that's the goal, that's the intent. Great, we have documentation. Table get size. Mm -hmm. Well, Tillerian says, if I recall, there were are level 32 quests requiring level 48 items. Have those 48 items also required on the 40 to 50 board? Little Redhead says, I remember in some of the early boards, an item would be used across multiple boards. Ignoring level. Um, yeah, that's sad. But I, I think my default would be pick each item in order for the quests as they appear on the quest boards. Uh, and then it just goes into the bag that corresponds to the first time you see it on the boards. 
I could be convinced to do it the other way, to start from the high end and then go down in the first time it appears and then uh, it's sorted as high as it can go if you're mostly concerned with um, making the most use out of a task item. I could, I could see it either way. Now we have just developed a big Indian, little Indian for task items. Fantastic. All right, you get size, table, any. No, it's actually a table. Um, the table whose items we will count. Return the number of items in the table, regardless of whether they are indexed with a number. Cool. All right, so we hover over that. Hey, just a table, and it returns an integer. Great. Mm hmm. Tillerian says broken daggers, level eight Mevan, level ten thorns, level twelve swan fleet. If uh, if they're called correctly. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, go take a look at our source control here. We have clone player currency, we have get size, we have make root node, that's all great. We have an updated item width parameter. Begin by populating a list of the current wallet items. And then we add the UI, remove them from here. Yes. Oh, let's go ahead and add the make root node function as we remove this. Do that as a separate uh, commit, and that's going to be refactored code for creating category node. Okay, that all looks about right. So we're going to go ahead and commit that because that is uh, a separate change. and says, by the way, currently my high level task item carryalls contain all items for tasks level 105 and above, there are 50. Very nice. Yeah, I think task items are one where I would definitely be interested in Lotra Companions um, telling me what I've got in there and helping me optimize that a little bit. Especially, uh, or or maybe a plugin that just uses an export from Lotric Companion. I don't know, just to be like, you've got duplicates, you should consolidate them. Nice. Your second one is level 75 to 100, which is also exactly 50 items. I like it. I guess I'd be more interested in a plugin that would use a Lotric Companion export compared against the, the great list of Tellurian to be like, these task item carryalls are not uh, optimal. <laughs> you should move this from here to here. All right, begin by populating. Awesome. Um, value. The changing value to wallet item. I like it. The real question is, did it show up anywhere else? Can't search there now, can I? Cool. Oh, you know, it's it's not a wild item though. I don't, actually don't like that name change now that I think about it. Well, I. I don't. Okay, because these wallet items are stored in our data file, and that was a that was probably a bad name on my part. Okay, um, calling our auto generated stuff wallet items. I mean, there's a wallet item, I think. Yep. 
in the API is asking for confusion. Please rename the auto-generated stuff to not conflict and update anything in code in the, that references them. Cool. That's a problem for later, though. Um, well, the wallet item thing I'm going to fix right now. So this is coming off of our auto-generated data. So if I just call this data wallet item, I think we'll call that good enough. <laughs> Delirian whistles innocently. I may or may not have done some of this requested work. It's a Python script. That's fun. OK, don't need the list box here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that rename for right now. So value becomes data wallet item uh, and data wallet item here. Renamed value for better readability. Okay, then uh, made use of item name variable. Item name here, making use of it here and here. Awesome. So then what do we have? We have the setting of the remaining currencies to nil, and then the populating of the UI with that new category, if there are any, and the two functions that are needed for it. So this is as isolated a commit as we can get. This is all functionally uh, goes together. So here we can go ahead and added unknown to Titan bar currencies to the wallet window. Great, commit. And push all that out. Oh, that's funny. We're gonna push that. Oh, right. So I was doing all this in a better currencies branch, and then I decided the wallet window tree view should be in its own branch, and that was fine. And then there was a um, initialization error that I was missing on the filter text that I found. So put that into the better currencies branch, merge that into the side side branch, uh, and then when we're done, wallet window tree view is going to merge back into better currencies, which itself could merge into a default branch. That's what was going on. All right, so we still have our items removed here, uh, and I think that makes sense in the short term. We're just going to leave that for right now. Um, Oh, interesting. Yeah, Tillerian talking about that Python script. It produces a list of all characters, which tasks they can turn in, and some other stuff. Output is HTML. Well, if you're ever interested in sharing that more broadly, let me let me know, and I'd be interested to see how it how it looks. Um, okay, so we're gonna leave these for next time. Uh, in the meantime, this window is not usable by me uh, to change what's on my bar, so. Uh, what do we do if that's the case? Well, that's why we have source control. So if we come in into source control and we come in into the better currencies branch and then reload Titan bar, everything up here is exactly the same, but this window is now usable again. So um, that'll, that'll allow me to use Titan bar throughout the week. Where'd that go? Um, that'll allow me to use Titan Bar throughout the week, but if I wanted to come back in here and do any more coding, I can just uh, move the code uh, past all the stuff we just did uh, up to present, uh, make any changes I want, and then drop back into here, which is kind of the the last place we were before we started mucking with the UI. So this is this is the last place I can be to add and remove things until we get that hooked up. <laughs> 
Tolerian says, I suppose you prefer the spaghetti code I produced. You know, all code has to start somewhere. I, I think it's easier to modify existing code than it is to write new code, personally. Yeah, depending on how bad the code is. Uh, but within, within reason. Okay, so that puts us at a really good stopping point. So, yeah, Tolerian, if you wanted to shoot me any of that over, uh, probably just Discord. Um, set it there, or you're welcome to, but no hurry, no rush. I don't really have a lot of time to get into it until next week anyway. Our, our cl class doesn't stop for the summer until then. Um, but yeah, if, if you wanted to share that, I'm ha happy to take a look at it. Okay, so today we have circled back around on the, the user interface to make sure that we are forward compatible, that new versions of uh, up, new updates of literature that bring in new currencies don't cause the exact same problem, which is that you would need a Titan bar release to work with them. Um, so I'm not sure how we're going to uh, make this work in a way that is uh, language agnostic. I don't actually know where we're going with this to, to make it so that when you have one of these items and you click on it, it goes on the bar uh, we're, we're, we're kind of making this up as we go, but I think we have a lot of the pieces we need for that. Uh, and we've made sure that we're thinking about what about new currencies. Um, so I'm very happy with that. <laughs> yes, I got there. So some code is born pasta, some achieve pasta, and some have pasta thrust upon them. <laughs> Dylan says, I have an executable, which is like bad by... Uh, my few virus scanners since the Pi and Solar output is classified on state. Feel free to just send the Python code itself. I can I can manage it on my end. I mean I'm interested to see the uh, the code anyway, but that uh, might help sh uh, short circuit some uh, aggressive virus scanner. Neat. Well, I think we're gonna go ahead and leave it there. Thank you uh, for giving me ideas about future plugins, everyone. Uh, not, not that I necessarily need to do it. My, my goal after we finish this Titan Bar revamp is to circle back around to Deed Tracker because I've gotten lots of feedback of deeds that aren't in there and feature uh, fixes that I want to do and all sorts of, of fun things. But it's definitely, uh, um, I have thought about carryalls multiple times. <laughs> Tillian says, I will send over the current version and you will never talk to me again about programming. <laughs> um, as we've seen, I've written my, my fair share of bad code, so uh, I try not to, to throw me too many stones about that. <laughs> awesome. Well, with that, that is everything we are going to cover today. Thank you so much for joining me on this exploration of Ledger Plugins. Uh, I hope to see you again next week. And until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now. <laughs>